Hello, this is John with Brainstorm Comics and Gaming, and this is going to be a hopefully weekly, it's going to depend on both of our schedules, I guess, hopefully it's going to be a weekly podcast detailing the reverse of what we're normally used to. It's going to be the fall and rise of Hal Jordan instead of the, the rise and fall. Um, so we're going to start with Emerald Twilight. Um, so I'm going to lay some background first because I think that it will probably be necessary right, for, for a lot of people to understand what had happened. So Emerald Twilight kind of spun out of the death of Superman. And the way that that happened was Superman had died and four people had replaced him. One was Superboy, who was the hybrid Lex Luthor um, su uh, Superman DNA. There was Steel, who was inspired by Superman. There was... Eradicator, who was an um, entity from Krypton, bent on keeping the Kryptonian ways alive. And the last one was Cyborg Superman. So Cyborg Superman is revealed later on to be Hank Henshaw, an astronaut that kind of had like a Fantastic Four type origin at first. Uh, only they didn't get superpowers, at least three of them didn't. Uh, <laughs> and then... <clears throat> So Hank Henshaw dies, and his his essence sort of inhabits the machinery around him, which reconstructs into Superman. So he's hell bent on destroying the legend of, of Superman. Like he's angry with him for allowing his crewmates and everything to die. Um, so during all of that, um, Mongol destroys Coast City to set up. I believe it was called War, War World, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, Cyborg Superman says he's going there to stop him because he's still pretending to try and live up to the legacy, but he's actually like part of this plot. So Coast City is destroyed, and this is pretty much where number 48 starts, which is the Emerald Twilight. So we'll start there. Um, one of the key things in this in this story, in this issue, obviously at the end of it, we get the first appearance of Kyle Rayner, who becomes later on. Um, and also we see we begin to see the descent of Hal Jordan. Um, I'll ask you, uh, what were your thoughts on, on this issue? I think issue 48 um, was written so well that even without the context, um, it felt to me almost like its own episode of The Twilight Zone. It was kind of like a stripping down and breaking apart. Like, any, you know, this obviously it's a superhero universe, and so that, that little bit of information is kind of necessary for this hero type person but it could have easily just been like somebody coming home from the war in their town you know gone twilight zone where they thought their town's supposed to be just a giant hole in the ground and go there but then he has these gifted with this ability with his ring to be able to reconstruct and so it kind of with his psyche and his emotional state broken down it kind of takes him on a journey of different important people in his life that he you know constructs with the ring to try to kind of have like those last moments that he didn't get to have because everybody was taken away from him and wiped out. And it's just a real breakdown of his psycho and like from his psyche, just really breaking down in one issue of just from the beginning of just the impact to where he is at the end of it, to, to the journey that he's about to take and, and set off on that path. So the funny thing I found about it, and not funny, funny, but like, you know, like, I write, I write. Um, a lot of the people who criticize this issue in the nineties, we're like, oh, you know, this is new information about Hal Jordan, about like his dad and stuff. Oh, this isn't like the Hal Jordan we know. And this is why I don't think they understood. It wasn't Hal Jordan's dad. It was how Hal Jordan viewed his relationship right, with his dad. Because um, obviously they weren't there anymore, yeah. and it was the ring. So it was all. It wasn't an actual conversation. If you took, if you look back at it from afar, it was him having a conversation with himself, yeah. aka him slowly going crazier because he's trying to have these conversations that he can't have. And he felt inferior. So he's he's going back through his childhood of like oh you gave all this praise to my to my brothers mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't do that for me, uh -huh. and now he's had the ultimate disappointment like a, as a hero like like his he, his dad was right and that he was wrong mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter and he didn't he couldn't do anything millions of people died because he wasn't there he couldn't save save his his city, um, and I know that this morning I told you to read up on it. Like, spinning out of this was a group called the Hal Emerald. First it was Attack Team, and then it became Emerald Advancement Team. Um, and those people were, were pretty hardcore towards, yeah. like, like... They had Ron Mars number for sure. And they, uh, they were sending him death threats. Yeah, they so dialed it many times. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
not pleased with what he was doing. So, again, I feel like they kind of missed the point of this one um, in terms of... Because they were saying he was acting out of character. To me, like, if you you were responsible for the death of millions of people, either through inaction or, or just not being able to stop whatever happened, right. that has to be a traumatic event, like... Right. I mean, even you can even go back to another storyline with DC with Killing Joke, where Joker says all it takes is one bad day, and you know you could end up just like me. And it kind of ran with that storyline. You know, all it takes. I mean, that was obviously a very bad day where seven million people died, but he knew and that he cared about his whole. It's kind of be like for what would happen to Superman if Metropolis was just completely wiped out. He could lose like to save Lane, it, right? Jimmy Olsen, it, right? Like who knows what you know somebody would do, and that was kind of these were his anger days, right? Like, and so after he talks to his dad, he talks to his mom also, and she's like, "Oh, it's just your dad being like kind of like right. blowing it off, sort of thing." Like, and again, I think that it wasn't really a conversation. Again, it wasn't a conversation with his with his mom. It was him like, "Oh, my dad isn't bad. It's just the you know." And it was even him trying to, I think, like his last bit of like conscious trying to save himself because he even says, you know, she says at the end, like just. You need to let it go. Like, don't do what you're about. Like, don't do what you're thinking. Like, just let it go and move on. And he even like tells himself, like, I can't. Like, and it looks like he he may be on the path to recovery. Like, he he's he's self self um, medicating right. through through the ring, and then the guardians <laughs> show up, <laughs> like they like to do, and they told At the worst time, yeah, they ruin everything. And they tell him, no, yeah. you can't you can't use the ring for this for this purpose, and you're in trouble because you've already started. Yeah. And you need to come back for disciplinary action in the middle of everyone you know and love is dead and seven million people. And they're like, yeah, we don't care about that. But you're in trouble because you were doing this and that's not sanctioned by our, by the Guardian in the court. Yeah, because they say you can't use it for, for self uh, For personal means. They said that's like the worst like perversion of the ring is to use it for to like self-pleasure, to use it for anything. For your own personal gain. So you're always on how uh, you're you're on how Jordan's side yeah. is. I mean, in that in that issue for sure in forty eight, especially as forty eight came out, nobody necessarily knew what was going to be the end result of it. But in that issue, you definitely feel for him, and you can understand. That's not the first time that Hal's gone up against the Guardians, where they've been very. That's their whole thing is they're not These attached. They're very detached. They're not emotional beings. They're very you know they're like Spock to like a to the nth degree. They're like we don't get involved. No matter how, and that's what he said, like, you could have done something to do this, and they're like, we don't do that. And, like, and just blow him off, like, we don't care, basically, that your city is gone. Like, you know the rules, and you broke the rules, so come in for disciplinary hearing, which is not something you want to hear in that emotional state when you're going through a tragedy. You know, you want someone to hold your hand and give you a hug, not just, like, smack you with a Especially him, like, 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 we just saw his his relationship with his dad, his relationship with his mom, at least from his perspective, again. Right. It may not have been accurate in terms of, like, what was real, but it was how he viewed Right. Um, so then we move on. Well, like I said, at the end of this issue, we see Kyle Rayner for the first time. Like they see a star, or what they think is a star, is actually Hal Jordan right. starting his <laughs> complex thing going up. But yeah, that's a nice uh, little teaser yes. of what's to come. Just some kid at the time. But yes. So then, issue forty nine, he goes. In, he's in outer space, and the Guardians have sent the core to prevent him from getting to Oa. Um. He goes up against many of his friends, uh, many of the people he trained himself. Uh, so what you, what did you think of this, this issue? I thought that for me, for 48, it was kind of hinting at um, how is, he's angry, he's unhinged, like this has, this trauma has like affected him in a way you can't imagine. And for whatever you were thinking, 49 made it real, where he really started doing things that you were like, well, wait a minute, like... If this, if this was sane, if this was a different circumstance, like Hal would never do this. And it really kind of showed you. And the narration did a really big part in this, um, which I thought, again, the writing, I thought was very well done. And where the narrator is like, these are horrible things. That, and he's like, but like, think about like this and like this happened. And what would you do in this situation? And the guardians are kind of terrible and they don't care. And they're, you know, like, and you have all this power but they don't let you use it when it really comes down to it and you need to do something that you feel is right or to save things you care about, they tell you no. Like, what would you do in that situation? And he tries to reason with the people. That you're like, hey, like, just let me do yeah, this. He tells them that to, he <laughs> says, like, I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. Please don't fight me. I don't want to hurt you. And, of course, because they're part of the core and they're bound by their oath, they don't listen and they do it. And, obviously, I wouldn't want to pick a fight with Hal Jordan even when he's not unhinged like that because he's the best Green Lantern. But certainly not when he's clearly, like, 
a little crazy and definitely going through trauma and not really listening to reason at the moment. And unfortunately, they don't listen. And so he begins taking each one of them out one by one and then, you know, taking their rings. And So the cover to this one is one of my favorite covers throughout all of comics. So it's how Jordan holding up the hands. having all Because after he defeats each one of these, these Green Lanterns, he takes the ring from them and, like... Now, I will say that this was another complaint from Heat at the time. I don't, I, I didn't read the articles that I told you to read because I, I lived through it. <laughs> so, so I remember a lot of it. Um, but a lot of the people from Heat were saying, oh, multiple rings don't give you more power. But to me, again, I think that it, it is based on willpower and just the thought that you have more power right. would, would add to and your... channeling. Well, but even it is a battery and just to have that and with that intense willpower and channeling all that, it was more of like it gave him more of a conduit to take the power battery from O with all of the rings and to use more of his willpower than maybe one ring could allow him. Um, another thing that people complained about, and this was actually somewhat answered in issue 50... But at that time of issue 49, I know people were complaining that he had left the, the lanterns to die because by taking the ring, he had... That was kind of my thought as well, where I was like, I don't know about that. And that seems like a step too far, even for even for Hal. Like, I don't think he would just like... Because that was my first thought. I was like, well, they don't have the ring. Like, they can't... How are they going to breathe in space? Like, he kind of just like... He didn't kill them, but like, he, they're going to die. Like, yeah. if he didn't, you know, do that. Um, and it was addressed in 50 in a way that... With a throwaway line. That I, I mean, think it was... it was, but I do think in a way that, it again, it still made sense. It was still Hal, but it was, again, it was, it's a deterioration. Of and it showed that Hal still cared. Like, it wasn't... I, I, my, my anger isn't with you. Right. Like, he very much wasn't... It's not like he was Sinestro and he's like, I want to kill every member of the Green Lantern Corps and burn them all down. He was just like, I'm mad at the Guardians, and I'm mad that they specifically told me no and won't let me help in this situation where I know... I can make this right, and they won't give it to me. Like, you guys are in my way. I don't want to hurt you. I still care about you. I train you. I like you guys. But you are in my way. I need you to move because I'm mad at them. It's not like an evil dismantling of everything, burn it all down. It was it's just like, I don't, it was like <laughs> I don't believe in this anymore, but you guys can do what you want. I just need to get to Oa and to get to the Guardians. Well, and our next, our next video will be about Zero Hour. And a lot of the groundwork for Zero Hour is laid throughout this also. Um, I'm sure you saw some of the quotes that, that he says, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, you know, I just want to fix things. I want to, and when we get to Zero Hour, I think that, you know, we'll... we'll More pieces fall into play. Exactly. Uh, and again, showing that he's not necessarily a bad guy. Right. He, he wants to do the right thing. He's just not necessarily going about it the way that... that he should be. Yeah. So we don't see Kyle Rayner at all in number 49. No. Um, and I think, if I, okay, so we'll go on to issue 50. Because if I remember correctly, issue 50 is where he does cut off one of the Green Lantern Corps members' hands to, yes. to, <laughs> to take the ring. So but To be fair, she asked him. <laughs> she said, if you want this ring, I'll take my hand. And he said, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to do that, but you told me to do it. I guess he's he's still the consummate soldier following and I order. Think in that, but I think in that point, I think, and it was definitely teased, and it gets teased further in Zero Hour, but it's definitely also, it's not an original concept per se. I think it's a well-written story, but again, it's just kind of the same thing about any one bad day, what would happen, but then also absolute power corrupts absolutely. So now he's got, you know, nine, ten rings on his hands channeling this battle. Like it literally, like it, by the time he gets to the end, and he's almost at oh, he's got so much that he's just mowing through people like it's nothing because he's got all this power and energy that obviously that's gonna mess with your head and stuff. So in that moment, you can say there's a lot more energy being a lot more Green Lantern battery than there is Hal Jordan in that moment. There's still the reasoning why he's there, and that thing behind it is still there. He wa still wants to do the same thing. But it's tainted and skewed because his his reasoning and his ability to see clearly is being clouded and and being taken away. So I think in that moment, a lot of his decision making isn't necessarily how Jordan thinking. It's just you know reactionary, reactionary, and become and what he is becoming because of that stuff and how much power that he's amassing. So the Guardians are so scared they do what most people would think would would be unthinkable for them. They turn to Sinestro, the ultimate traitor to the cause. Mm -hmm. um, they release him from the power battery. He's been a, yeah, he's been a Hal Jordan. He's been he's been captured in the 
power battery, which apparently is driven him even crazier. Right. Than... <laughs> which I thought, the one thing I thought was interesting still about 49 was that the, I found the narration piece was very interesting and essential to the character. But then at the end of the issue, you found out the person narrating it is actually Sinestro, which is like, oh, I'm not supposed to agree with his point of view or like his point of view. Like you, then you kind of question yourself or like, and you have that struggle of like, oh, at first, like you said, you're almost on house side and then you get that and you're like, ooh, well, if Sinestro kind of agrees with you on, on, on basic principle, you're probably not in a good headspace if, if this guy is like, you know, I don't disagree with what you're doing. I need to stop you because I want my freedom. But thumbs up. Good job. You're doing it, man. So the, the best line that I, I feel Sinestro delivered all of it was like, things never change. You're still that same guy, which clearly Hal is not the same guy. Right. And I think that one of the things that people get used to in comics is, oh, you know, this this is going to last for like six months or whatever, and then it'll go back to normal. The cool thing about the the fall and rise of Hal Jordan is the character went through what I consider probably the greatest character arc in comic books like that I have ever read. Like maybe there's a greater one that I haven't read. I don't know. Um, if somebody knows of one, please let me know. I'd love to, love to read that also. But this was like a, an eight year, ten year storyline of like. The progression of this character and i do feel like sinestro is right in that a lot of times there's the illusion of change but it's not real change for these characters right this character underwent true change for like i said eight eight to ten years right um and we'll discuss my feelings on that you know my feelings already towards towards the end of, of that stuff but um the, leading up to that was, was an amazing character arc i agree and definitely for like you know a silver age character and a, and a replacement there's some a lot of people have mixed feelings you know whether it's wally west replacing barry allen or kyle replacing how a lot of people have some people love it some people were raised with those characters like wally and well, time, that's the first flash that i personally knew was wally so i obviously have feelings for it but people who had it before you can obviously imagine having characters stripped away but even with that this this transformation of how is different because with the flash he was just dead and then just in a heroic way. So it wasn't yes, and it wasn't just like he it was had, a sacrifice. Right. It wasn't like he had all this year of where he wasn't the flash, but he was going through this journey, or everything, he was just gone. Whereas with Hal, he had a good solid eight, ten years, like you said, where he was not Green Lantern, but he was still there and going through, like you said, different character arcs. And it wasn't like an ongoing or, or all the time thing, but he was always, in the background. But he was always there in the background. He was still dealing with stuff and changing and becoming different things and growing. And like you said, a real transformation character arc going through where other characters, a lot of times when they get replaced, it's just because like with Barry Allen, they're just not there anymore. And so then when they come back, obviously it's still special when you get a character back. But it's different because they didn't necessarily go through character growth. They were just dead and now they're back, which like, hooray, they're back. But they didn't have all this character arc where Hal Jordan almost didn't have that luxury. and He had to deal with all that pain and to still be around and to go through all that transformation. So one of the biggest complaints about Hal Jordan, and I think you said you read the article about it with, with Ron Mars, DC and a lot of the fans viewed him as very, very milk toast, very vanilla, very, very boring. A space pal. Yeah. He was just floating around stopping aliens with a green ring. So this this character arc added so much, so many more layers to the character, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I am going to go ahead and say my end, end opinion. I, I feel like when they kind of absolved him of all this stuff, that they took those layers away from him. And I know that Batman still blamed him and some of the issues, and, and but Batman's Batman, and um, he, he had become a more and more interesting character as he went along. I felt like you know. The fact that he had this big failure, the fact that he did all these things in between kind of kind of made him a more interesting character. Mm -hmm. I think, again, with I think largely DC, but you know, you can say on the writer as well that it was it's always that question of if we leave it as is, has this person done too much to just get like realistically, like and it's kind of the point, like you said, with Batman, a couple of characters, you know, they they're like, No, like you did all of it, like I we you just don't get to be like, oh no, no, no. It's okay. I'm better it was a, now. It was parasite, right. Though. I'm better now. It's fine. We can be it friends wasn't me now. It was right. A parasite. Right. It wasn't even me. We can be friends now. Like obviously, like there's if it was if there wasn't some type of like okay, this can't just be you. I think it would be a lot more characters to be like, well, no, obviously, I'm not gonna like be friends with you anymore. I'm not gonna fight with you because how do I know you're gonna have my back? Because you did all those evil, terrible things, regardless of your reasoning behind it or the fact that you were trying to do the right thing you didn't and you went off on this whole 
crazy spiel. I think there was fear that I think both with fans and with the characters that they had established, especially since a lot of them are very black and white, you know, there's good and there's bad and you don't mince that if he just came back without any other explanation as to why all of these things happened, he wouldn't be accepted and he wouldn't be allowed to come back in and certainly join the Justice League or be a part of any type of organization. So I can I can see that side of it where like it's like what how much is too far, but I can also understand you know your side of it and having like lived through it and seeing like all of the character development and then that kind of just being like eh, it's cut cast by the wayside is frustrating well, because me, it was really good character development. Well, to me, the reason that it it bothered me was I become a Hal Jordan fan, even though he was a bad guy. I understood why he was doing what he was doing. Like I didn't necessarily think he was doing it for the right reasons or, or what have you or going about it the right way but you know it felt felt like something a person would do right. um also i love comic books but i feel like a lot of times people tell a story and there's no repercussions this story kept having repercussions right like everything led to the next thing it, it wasn't just okay this is a standalone story and this is a standalone story and right. this is a standalone story and it wasn't just to get to the big event and then have it be solved at the end because it wasn't. Like, exactly. like it, the day was saved, but his arc wasn't done. It wasn't like, okay, well, we fixed Hal now and everything's back to normal. It stayed for eight years yeah. after that. So so one of my favorite storylines is Civil War, and I feel like the repercussions coming out, out of that did not go far enough. Like, so we have one guy in Hal Jordan with like eight years of, of repercussions, whereas Civil War felt like it only had like two years, and it was like, eh, you know, this is too hard to manage. And right. Like, and... I feel like Marvel missed the big opportunity there because, again, like if you had done like an eight-year plan, ten-year plan of where all these things kind of spilled out and kept affecting things and ripple effects sort of thing. Um, and that's, again, why I love this story so much. Just, like It's Hal Jordan's um, descent so much is it felt like everything led to the next thing. It, right. it didn't feel like each thing was just like, oh, look, this is for this trade here back and this is for that trade right. here back. Right, we'll throw something else in or somebody else's in. I think that largely helped with a lot of it was, you know, Ron Mars stayed around for a lot of the writing. Mm -hmm. um, the people that did at Zero Hour, obviously, they were clearly in communication and with the editorial staff and figuring out, okay, like, what are we doing with this character and a couple others and how is this, and then after this is done, what's going to happen afterwards and how is that going to con keep continuing? And I think both with, Justice League and Green Lantern and several other, you know, storylines, all of which didn't have the same writer, but it was all in the same, okay, well, this, this is what's going on with Hal. And, you know, like, you can't just say, oh, I don't care about that. I'm going to have him here. Or, like, I want him as Green Lantern back. I'm doing, like, it was, it was understood that, like, this, cohesive. this is what's going on. And obviously not every character relates to this and not every character needs to be involved with it, but the ones that are and that know him close, like, this is going on in the background. Like, keep that in mind when you're writing because this isn't, you know, just, oh, we figured it out and solved it, move on. Like, this is this is the status quo for right now. So it also elevated a lot of... So Cyborg Superman became, like, this really cool villain within the DCU. I can't just say that. <laughs> He's just the worst. I don't care how many people died on the spaceship. There's a line, of, there's a line and you crossed it. Uh, Mongol got... got yeah. Became a bigger villain. Everybody hates Mongol. Um, but we'll, we'll, well, we'll let's finish with issue 50, 50 and then we'll talk about repercussions outside of the, the comics. Um, so Symmetra is defeated. Um, more than defeated, this is where Hal Jordan goes that extra mile and kind of goes off the deep end. With the, uh, the Man of Steel snap. He snaps the neck of Sinestro. He's like... And it seems like Sinestro still doubts that he's going to do it at this point. Uh, no, I think it was very clear that he wanted him to because in that point, that's what, and that's a really good line. Like you said, Sinestro has a couple in there because he is the one, he's his nemesis. He's the one that gets in his head the most. He trained him and he said, you know, after the end of their big fight, because, you know, the whole thing, he was like, well, you used to have all those rings. And if you didn't have those rings, then I would win. He's like, I don't care. Takes them all off, except for his, like, I'm going to do this win. And then finally that stops and he's in there like, no, let's just do this straight up fist fight. I'm still gonna beat you, and he does. And at the end, he's just screaming like, "I win, I win!" And Sinestro is like almost like last yeah. breath, but he's like, "Did you like look at yourself? Like, did you win? Like, I win. You didn't win. I win. You're like, me. I, like I broke you. Like, you're me. Like, I win." And then that kind of pushes him too far, and he's the same thing. Like, oh, you know, you won't do it. I think you should, and he does kill him. And but with that again, even in death, won Sinestro won wins because he wanted him to. Because it was again, how far? Can I push him? How far will he go until he's 
like me but worse almost or like me but like stronger me but better version of what i wanted to be now kilowog showed up afterwards right yes okay so kilowog shows up his best friend and he's like how you've, you've gone too far like right coming back after he already thought that he was you know knocked out ring taken everything and this is where we had like, have that conversation where he's like you left all of them to die and he goes no no i left them a little bit of energy so that they can can right. survive and then he, but he says, you know, like, because his end plan is to go into the battery and take all the power. And he's like, well, what happens after that? What about people who are flying? What about, like, you're not thinking, like, trying to reason to him, like, you're not thinking this through, still trying to reach out, like, in friendship, like, look, like, I know that you are going through stuff, but I know, like, you are hurting right now. I know the Guardians don't care about you, like, but I do, but you're not thinking this through. If you take all the battery, like, nobody has that. Like, almost everybody in the core is probably going to die. Like, the or if they're like, in battle. This, right. As soon as you do that, there are a lot of repercussions if you just take that. And he's, but he's so driven in that one thing where he's like, maybe for a little bit, but I can fix it if I just have, if I just have the power, I can fix it. Like, you just have to trust me type of deal. And his response is to disintegrate him. <laughs> Well, Kilowog says no, and he <laughs> says the whole thing. I mean, how's pretty clear. If you side with him, if you agree with him, he's gonna leave you alone. But nobody does. Yeah. So then he, and I think that's the step where I think a lot of people got really angry. A that he killed Sinestro because Hal Jordan doesn't kill, and then or most of your superheroes at the time don't do that. That's not something superheroes do. They send you to jail or space prison or put you in the battery. They don't, you know, they don't do that. Um, but then he takes it a step further and. And again, which, and afterwards, like, there is remorse, like, there is regret, but he, you know, he uses all his power and he disintegrates. I'll completely fix it later. Kills, like, Kilowog, <laughs> like, their skeleton bone. Like, it's, like, not like, oh, he's pretty badly beaten over there, but he might be okay. Like, he no, disintegrates he's him. gone. Like, there's no bringing him back. And then he's like, well, I'll, I'll fi-. and then again, the same mentality, like, I'll fix this too. Like, I just need the power and I'll fix everything. Yes. So the Guardians are very, very scared now. They're like, oh my God, you know, what have we done? Um, and they side with Gamp, but telling him that he has to go fix things long term. So Hal gets into the battery. He comes out of the battery and he's a new person. He is Parallax at this point. They don't say his name. They don't, like, yes. but this but is. He's, he's very giving dialogue, which you said feeds into the, the event crisis. And he. Is giving off, you know, like I'm not, and he's very clear about that. I'm not a Green Lantern anymore. Like, I don't. Like, he throws the ring that. down, he, steps he takes on it. it. Yeah, he doesn't even use that as power. He takes off the ring. He's like, I'm not this. Like you say, he hasn't given himself a name yet, but he's like, I'm something else. Like I'm not Green Lantern. I'm not Hal Jordan. Like that's not who I am anymore. I'm a new person. And then Gantt wakes up, uh, or he's in the pile of bodies, and after Hal Jordan leaves, he comes out of the pile of bodies and he finds the broken ring. And he reforms it into a so new ring. His last bit of it. Yeah. The other Guardians, they gave up their life to kind of give Ganthet all of their combined power. And then with their last bit of energy, he fixes the ring and he sets off on a mission to uh, find a replacement. So he goes to Earth and he finds Kyle Rayner and his words are, eh, you'll do. <laughs> Literally. It's, it's the biggest vote <laughs> of confidence ever. This dude's just coming out of the club back, having a good time with his girlfriend. Trying to get some fresh air. Blue guy shows up out of nowhere. You know, it wasn't even the whole dying pilot in the field that Hal got, where there's at least a little bit of like even dying breath. He's explaining a little bit. He's just like, yeah, well, we are here. I can't give it to that homeless guy over there, so I guess you're fine. And he's like, what do I do with it? And he's like, well, you must. You'll know when the time comes. You know, just as cryptic as possible, yeah. and then just gone. With so, this guy, you know, just having who knows nothing about any of this and has no initiation or like Green Lantern, the Guardians or Core to come back to to help explain him or train him in any fashion. So we see Power Ranger for the first time as, as Green Lantern also with a cool new look and it's a giant clunky mask. Yes. Um, I know that we didn't get into this, but I, one of the cool parts of, of Power Ranger is that he was a graphic designer, so. Mm-hmm. He's always using the ring for new things instead of just giant punching or yeah, boxing gloves. His creativity and... helps with the, you know, the ring. The yeah. Power. So, uh, so that was the the first um, three issues that we're going to cover. Like I said, our, our next video we're going to cover is Zero Hour. Um, and I told you I wanted to talk about like the repercussions of the story, not just within the story, but outside of the story. So we touched on heat already. Um, and before we started this video, I told you like they kind of laid the groundwork for how a lot of internet 
groups react to storylines that they don't that they don't like or character changes that they don't right. like. What Marvel's going through now, DC pretty much laid the groundwork for like thirty years ago, um, with with their new characters and everything. Right. Um, that's why I, I'm not saying that there aren't some people who are like racist or or or, or whatever for the new characters. But I feel like a lot of it isn't necessarily that. I think it's just that people grow up with some of these characters and they have an attachment to it. And, right. And, and they don't want their things taken away. And again, because you see that with like Green Lantern and, and, and all that. And I'm not saying like, that none of the people are like that, but I, I do think that people, whatever character they start with, that's their their character for for um, for comic books. And people just don't like change in general. They don't like change. They make a big change and then all of a sudden, like you said, Maybe their favorite character, one of their characters, is replaced or something that they think sh- should or could never happen to their character. It's obviously tough to deal with now. The natural response is probably not to send like death threats for that person for, I would people, for years to come. Um, poor Ron Mars. Um, but that was kind of a, it was sort of the first, you know, beginning of the internet being widely used. And, and they were using bulletin thing. boards. It wasn't like the, the to, amount of websites. To start with, stuff. right, because they didn't have, you know, they would have loved if it happened in 2020 and they had the technology, the capabilities that they do now. But they, with all their power and everything they had, they definitely tried to make, you know, every convention, you know, Ron Mars was not uh, met with uh, adoring fans and everything. There was a lot of them that just came out just to, like, heckle and, like, throw things and, like, say, you know, like, bring back Hal and like why did you ruin this which is a shame because the sales on it were really were, were really good um like I said and the storyline was, was was really really good and he created a, a brand new interesting really great character that was able to be sculpted out by other people I mean Grant Morrison used him in his version of JLA and everything like he was molded by a lot of really good writers at the time to make him a really good solid character that it's it's hard to do it's hard to to just take it's easy to just say well green lantern okay anybody can wear the rings pop in a new character it'll be fine but to do it and to create a character that people actually really like and actually resonates with and goes through his own you know traumas and dealing and and becomes this hero kind of like i said without the benefit of the core or the benefit of the guardians or any kind of training and has to kind of fight it out on his own and get his mentors like elsewhere to create a really great character, you know, for 10 years and to kind of only be seen for how you started and not seen for like, well, look at this other like really good stuff I'm doing and to just have people be so focused on like, well, no, because you did this, so I can't forgive you. I was so shocked, like even at that point, that so many people were so in love with such a vanilla character that they would have such a hard right. reaction to it. And I think, and like I said in the, the interview I read with Ron Mar- he said that it's kind of he kind of boiled it down to a lot of people you don't know what you have until it's gone so a lot of people even if they weren't the most staunch Hal Jordan fans it was well he wasn't my favorite but he was always there and you know like the Justice League and Green Lantern and that's Hal Jordan and like that's that's what it is you can't change that so so my question like for today is like so how are those people going to react when it's John Stewart up on the screen? Because it's young kids and everything have grown up with John Stewart as their Green Lantern. Because most of them are, are watching the cartoons and stuff right. more so than, than reading the comic books. I first Green Lantern I was exposed. Exactly. To. Like the, the if you're in your like mid twenties or younger, I think that, that John Stewart is probably your 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 Green Lantern. Uh, I know one thing that you wanted to touch on because because of an interview that you had read was how Ron Mars said he got the assignment and made you feel even worse for him. Right. So basically the whole, like you said, there are some people that feel very strongly. About, I think everybody feels strongly about Emerald Twilight, if you know the story. If you don't know, going in, you kind of have the blessing of not having to deal with the burden of which side of the story you're on. But anyone who lived through it, definitely, like people either like thought it was a really great story and embraced it, or they completely hated it and started attacking Ron Mars. But in an interview, he said that he's always amazed that... Um, people don't seem to realize how the industry works and that when he was approached it wasn't just hey we want you to take over Greenland and write a story it was we're we are getting rid of Hal Jordan like that's happening and you we want a new Greenland you can make up the new Greenland which again is a testament to his writing ability to create the character of Kyle Langley but they said it's happening do you want to do it and so he said he had to think about it but it was going to happen whether he wrote it or not Emerald Twilight was going to happen. It might have been different. It might have been a worse story because if they had went to somebody else, he did the best he could with what he was given. 
but that was the mandate from from up on high was that sales are bad people don't really like or appreciate him we're moving him out out with the old in with the new do you want to do this if not we're gonna ask the next guy over and that was actually a common thing at dc at that point like i said so superman was replaced by four different characters batman was replaced by Azrael. Uh, Flash introduced Impulse. Didn't really replace Flash, but like he was. But in himself was also a replacement as well. He was yeah. at the time, yeah. so there was a replacement and an adjacent replacement with Impulse. Um, Aquaman was not replaced, but he lost his hand and was replaced with a harpoon. Had the whole the beard and yeah. the hair and the whole. Uh, so like DC was going through this whole changing period. Again, I, I, I again I feel like this is very reminiscent of what Marvel's going through right now. Or over the last six years or so for Marvel, how they've replaced a lot of their characters or, or tried to replace some of their characters. Some of them have already been changed back, some of them not. Um, but I, like, like you said, I it wasn't his fault. He was given an assignment. It's not his character. Right. Like, <laughs> what happened? It was his first it was literally his first working on the character. It was his first time going there and they said, you know, like we want you to write this this is what you have to write afterwards. Like with the new character, you know, you can do kind of what you want, but just don't bring him back. Like this is what you have to do. And if you don't do it, somebody else will. So we didn't read this one. Well, I read it when it came out, but I know you know the storyline. So Ron Mars wasn't just unfortunate for that. He also uh, wrote a storyline where Kyle's girlfriend was killed by one of those arch enemies. That was, um, that was, that was too much. That was, that was just too much. So, that, which this began the women in refrigerator yeah. movement as well. So now he had two groups that were pretty much calling for... That one was a little justified. It was, it was a little... Why did she have to be in the fridge? I... So, okay, so maybe the death went a little too far in terms of like how... putting a hat on a hat. She was already dead. It was like, it's just the shock and awe of it all. But I feel like what Ron Mars was trying to convey was... Kyle Rayner isn't going to be like Hal Jordan, that he can handle his losses a little bit, a little bit better. Um, but maybe, like you said, maybe being put in the refrigerator was a little, little far. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't think that he hates women. I don't think like that. Was no, like, I don't either. But I think it was, I think it was, and, and the only credit I will say, if you want to criticize it, it maybe wasn't the perfect way to do it, but it was to convey a, like you said, the differences between Kyle and Hal, because at that point, all it was was just comparison. Of like, well, you know, like it's still Green Lantern. Like, how is this guy any different? Or if he is, do we like it? Is it just bad different? Well, because he was, had his, I mean, if I remember correctly, he had his chance to kill Major Force. I don't think he did. I have to go back and read it. Um, but I don't um, believe he did either. Yeah. So that was what I, what I was reading. I don't think he did, but he did confront him and everything. And he was tempted to. And again, like, I think the whole point was that he wasn't going to go down that same road as. Yeah, that's how. and I think, but also to just paint out the same, you know, classic storyline is when you are a superhero, like, the people who you love, if, like, people find out, like, they are targets, it's the same reason, like, it brings on the secret identity thing, like, why do people have that if you have superpowers, it's like, well, not to protect you, to protect the people you care about, and because, you know, you he, can take care of yourself. he was young and, and very new at the time, like you said, didn't even have, you know, the training and everything, that type of role, just to kind of, like, trial by fire almost of like look like all right this is it's not all just you know make a big transformer with your ring and beat up a bad guy like it's not always like fun and like you know rainbows and sunshine like, there's a, a dark side to it where there's tragedy that follows and he had been kind of lazy on some of the stuff of keeping his secret identity which is how he just found out right um so like i said i mean the repercussions within the comic book outside of the comic book it was just interesting all the way around at that point but yeah, definitely. It launched Gail, Gail Simone's career because she was uh, the, one of the people behind, or she was the person behind uh, Women in Refrigerator. So uh, I guess people are, are lucky that they got like some of her her books as a result of, of, yeah. <laughs> of Brown Martin is doing it, if you want to look at it that way. I mean, it definitely had a lot of, like, it definitely outlived one person or like one time period or everything. It's one definitely writer. something that. Even though obviously like DC is not the same and there's been several reboots and different things since then and, and nothing stays the same in comics forever. But I think for people around my age, it's really cool to look back where if, if you lived through it, it was sort of like DC kind of like hit the brakes and slammed into reverse too fast that so they were stripping all the gears off and a lot of people were angry, didn't like it. But if you're able to be on the other side of it where that's already in the past and it happened and it's not necessarily continuity now, whether it should or shouldn't be, it's cool to look back. Like Aquaman is so much cooler than like on Super Friends riding a seahorse to see him 
look more like Jason Momoa with like a harpoon hand. I was like, that's cool. Like that makes me want to read that. This story with Hal Jordan where like all that happens and then there's this new guy who's like young. He's a cool guy. Like you said, he's a graphic artist, so he's very creative with the ring and everything. Several other stuff. Um, I hate Azrael. But other things are cool. <laughs> and like when you go back and when you look at it for what it was, like I went back and read like the JLA, you know, the Grant Morrison did with all that stuff, which again, not knowing necessarily what had happened beforehand, but on its own seeing it and embracing the new characters. And he was in all of who he was hanging around with. And, like, yeah, was. and it was and it's really cool to like go back and look at it. It's a really cool time, I think, for people my age to just look back and to just take it for what it is as like really good characters by some really great writers and different stories that we don't feel as negatively or passionate towards because it wasn't the things that we were used to stripped from us and taken away. So I think it's a really good time period of that nineties D C to go back and to reread. So I say this all the time. I started reading comics with the death of Superman, like really intensely. And while I love Superman, what made me stay in comics was, was this, was the storyline. Um, again, like I love to write, so I love seeing repercussions and, and the way things react and everything. Um, so in closing, do you have any, any thoughts overall outside of what you just said about how the... I just say that it's a, it's a really good... Uh, story arc, like I said, honestly. I think you skipped ahead the zero hour, so you're looking forward to. I did. It did. It, did, it does leave you wanting more, definitely, with the character because it makes you feel strongly about one way or the other, whether you love him or hate him. By the end of it, it definitely makes you like, okay, well, what's he gonna do next? Like, what's gonna happen? And there's definitely much more to the story. They didn't leave you hanging for very long, but like you said, we'll talk about that. But I think issue forty eight, like I said, could be its own thing, even like an Elseworld tale or something, and stand on its own and without even anything to do with it, and it would still be a really great story. So, so I just did a lot of great writing. I've said this for quite some time. I think DC movies are missing the boat because I think they should do like a Death of Superman storyline that kind of leads into the Green Lantern storyline kind of like the right. like I feel like the nineties stories were just so again cohesive. Like they 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 could have like a whole run of movies that would easily rival what, what the, the Marvel movies have done and fill. The problem is they do it, but they make them all their animated movies. So then they feel like, oh, well, we can't do that. We already made an animated movie about it. And I'm like, yeah, but like as much as I love them, I'm like, nobody really watches those. Yeah. So like, well, the if you put it on the big screen, right, yeah. you put it on the big screen, like that's a much bigger audience. Like you said, like a good story is a good story. Like obviously it can be modernized and adapted, but like, a good story is a good story. Well, the quality's if, there. If they do the death of Superman, they can spin out like five movies from that because they do one about Cyborg, they can do one about like um, Superboy, they can do one about like, and then the green. Like, it just spills out. Right. Like, yeah, it just makes me angry because <laughs> I feel like the, wasted opportunity. I do, I do. Uh, well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this one. We're going to do one based on Zero Hour next. That's going to be part two of the Fall and Rise of Green Lantern. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you see us next time. Have a good day.